Welcome to Electro Online. So here are the next three examples of how to work with energy equation type of problems. We have an equation that is balanced. On the left side, we have the work put into the system plus the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy must equal the potential energy and the kinetic energy at the final situation plus whatever energy we might have lost due to friction. Now in this case with a pulley, uh, we're not putting any work into it. There's no forces acting on it besides the force of gravity. And that's accounted for for the potential energy, uh, so by the potential energy, so we don't need to worry about that. And there's no energy loss because there's no friction on the pulley and there's no wind resistance, so we ignore all that. All right, so what does the equation then look like? Well, we have no work put into the system. Our initial potential energy, well, there's two blocks. The first block is at height H1, so it's M1GH1. The second block is at height H2, so it's M2GH2. And they're not moving initially. We're letting them do it when they're, when they're sitting still, so there's no kinetic energy. At the end, well, block one has now gained an additional H2 in height. So it'll be M1G H1 plus H2. The final block is now on the floor, so there's no longer any potential energy, so that part is zero. And now they're both moving at the velocity v, so they both have kinetic energy. One half m1 v squared plus one half m2 v squared, and no energy loss due to friction or wind resistance or anything like that. Then you take that whole long equation, solve it for v, and this is what you end up with. You can actually work a problem like this a little quicker. We can actually say, well, on the left side, we can call the zero height for block M2 over here and the zero height for block M1 over there. So we end up with no potential energy and no kinetic energy and no work put into the system when we start. So we arbitrarily choose our zero height for block 2 over here where it's at and the zero height for block 1 over there. So no potential energy initial. Relative to those heights, how did the potential energy change? Now block 1 gained however much block 2 lost. So block 2 went down a distance h, that means block 1 went up a distance h. So from the zero position, block 1 gained this much potential energy. Block 2 lost potential energy from the zero height and it went downward, so it's minus m2gh. They both have the kinetic energy, one half mv squared, so combine the masses, one half m1 plus m2 v squared. And then if you solve that equation for v, you get the exact same answer. And it's a little quicker. So sometimes you can make things a little easier algebraically by just using the new reference point called h0 for m2, h0 for m1, and then the equation is a little simpler. So whichever way you prefer, you end up with the same answer. Another very typical example is that a block slides from an incline where there's no friction, hits the bottom where there is friction on the horizontal surface, and now they ask how far will the block slide before it comes to a stop. Final velocity is equal to zero. So we realize now that we're going to have energy loss due to friction. Notice we have the weight mg pulling down, we have the normal force pushing back up, and the friction force, which is the normal force times mu, which is mg times mu. So now what does the equation become? Well, we have no work put into the system. We just simply put the block there, let it go. It has potential energy, mgh. It has no kinetic energy because it has no velocity when it started. And at the end, when it's over here, now this is the beauty of this equation. We don't have to worry about how fast it's traveling when it gets to the bottom of the hill and all that. We simply start with the initial position, the final position, and ignore everything else in between. Of course, if there's friction, we have to deal with that. And then we can say at the end it has no potential energy because the height is zero. It has no kinetic energy because it's not moving. And it lost energy, force friction times distance. Now force friction is mg mu, distance is d. Solve this for d, you get h over mu. So you can see that the energy equation makes it a lot easier than the equation kinematics to solve certain types of problems, especially when there's friction involved. And so you can see that this is really a nice way to handle these types of problems. So we'll show you some more examples because of course there's lots of different kinds of examples that you need to see and that you really begin to feel comfortable with this concept of energy initial must equal energy final and that is how it's done.